The next interview is with Connie Hab. Hello, we're back again at the Bayport Blue Point Public Library. My name's Gene Horton, and today we have the pleasure of introducing Connie Hab, and she'll be here to tell us what life was like for her back in Bayport and Blue Point area uh, for the, the early forever. parts of her life, yeah, forever. So let me just start by welcoming Connie and ask her to give us her full name. Okay. Well, Good. Connie, but really Constance Laidlaw Hebb. And when and where were you born, Connie? I was born in Southside Hospital in, on September 27, 1932. And my home was the corner of South Snedeker Avenue and Middle Road. The home is no longer there, but that's where I lived. Yep. There's a doctor's office there today, yeah, I think. doctor's office and part of the church. The, and part of the church. The, uh, yeah. It's nice that the barn survived. The barn is still there, <laughs> and it's now the thrift shop, so... That's good. Something survived. That's good. And uh, where else did you live beside there? Well, from there, we moved to... My grandmother... My aunt lived next door... And my grandmother lived in the next house after that on South Seneca. And we lived there for a number of years. Moved to Florida for one year because my father wasn't well and he thought it would be better. And, but it wasn't. And then we came back and lived on Montauk Highway when he purchased the, the bar yeah. and grill. And uh, how long have you lived in Bayport? 80 years. All 80 my whole life. years, your whole life. Yeah. A native Bayporter. Isn't that wonderful? Yep. And how how come, how was it that your family came to live in Bayport originally? I'm not sure. My grandfather, yeah. what, lived. they lived in Brooklyn, yeah. and he was a like a mortgage broker, I believe. Um, I believe it's because everyone came out here, because this was the summer place to go, and most of the, they built all those big homes on South Static Avenue. The majority of them were just summer residents, and I believe he thought that was a good place to bring his family. Nice place to grow right. up. Same with they, my family. We lived in Brooklyn. Right. And then we moved out here. And I don't know whether he commuted to the city or what he did yeah. after that. He probably didn't work once he came out of here. Yeah. Because he was quite a bit older than... than that was a grandma. long commute. Yeah. <laughs> in those days, yeah. <laughs> and what high school did you attend? Went to Bayport. And g- graduated in the class of... 50. 1950. Yeah. Do you go to reunions? Yes, I go to the, the reunion. Good. You know, try to go over yet. Sure. The all class reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Not many of us come. There's how how big was your class? Did you have a lot of? St- uh, yeah, not not fairly big. They weren't really big. like they were in the early years. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I was going to say fifty. I don't know if there's that many. Yeah, I have a yearbook home, but because there were children in your class that weren't from Bayport. Right, you had, we had Blue Point and we had Hogesville, yeah. Farmingville. Sure, so, so they were. They were. That's true. So, and then what jobs have you had over all these wonderful well, years? I started out with a part-time job in the luncheonette in Bayport Village, which was Howard Sheen's luncheonette. And then I went across the street and worked in Shands wow. in the meat department yeah. until the end of the 60s. Yeah. And then I ended up going to the town of Islip and worked there for 35 years. Wow. That's amazing. So, well, it was a, <laughs> a career because it was benefits and yeah, retirement course. and whatever. So of course, town of ice slip. It was a good move. Yeah. And how'd you meet and marry your spouse? Well, the, he, we had the, I, we lived in the house. We built after the war. We built a house behind the bar on Montauk Highway, oh. and that's where we were living. And he, and his father and brother, built Bayport Lumber which was right across the street. Sure. So I met him there, and he belonged to the fire department, and he was working at the... They used to have bazaars and things every summer, and I met him there, and that's how we met. Isn't that wonderful? It was right right there. Yeah. <laughs> and he lived on Santa Graham New also, so Why? on the middle part, which is odd, too, uh-huh. because the house that he lived in when they, he first moved to Bayport was sold to my friends, the Sheens, uh-huh. and they, in turn, sold it to my daughter who still lives there. Uh, and then I was going to ask you, too, about, do you remember any historical events like, uh, I don't know, the Hurricane of 38 or, or things like that? I remember like the that. Hurricane of 38, but I was not in Bayport that particular oh. day. I was at my aunt's house in Patrick, oh. so, I mean, I do remember it. Yeah. Uh, you know, being in the house and being sure. more so, the, you know, the storm of 47 when they had the snowstorm. Yeah. I lived on in 
Montauk Highway then. That was tough because my father was sick and we couldn't, had to get an ambulance and they couldn't, well, the ambulance in those days <laughs> looked like a hearse. Um, <laughs> could barely make their way into the yard to yeah. get in there to get them out of there. And where was the hospital? It was Southside South in those days. Yeah, it was That's no, a long trip. Yeah, Brookhaven wasn't even here. Brookhaven when we, didn't when exist. My children were born, no. Wow. I, had to go to, I went to Mather. Yeah, that's a long trip, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not For those good. days, because you didn't get around the, yeah. the little roads we have now. Do you remember any of the summer activities that you used to take part in? Well, most of my summer activities consisted of the beach, because most of the people on Santa Cruz Avenue that owned their year-round homes, some of them would rent them out and go somewhere else for the summer. And we had the beach house, and it's still there, on the end of South Snedeker. And we used to rent our house out and stay there for the summer for a couple of months. So, you know, we were at the beach all day because it was a beach then, <laughs> a big beach in front yeah, of the house. Big beach. <laughs> uh, there was yeah. a little dock, like a little pier on there. We could, we'd go over there and fish and crab, dig sure. clams with our feet. You know, it was. So it was like your, like your summer house. Summer house, right. A little it was really funny. House. I mean, of course, that, you know. Yeah. The other house, there were a lot of others down there, but I don't think anyone else ever really stayed in it. Yeah. And those they, houses are there today. Most some of, of them. them are. A couple most of them, them went in this last storm. Yeah. But the Sandy. ones like the Purdy one on the other corner, yeah. they were fixing that up. We're trying to save it anyway. Wow. They're still there, but they were, you know, they'd go down there and they'd just bring their eat uh -huh. and sit on the porch and just use it as a. Now, do people live place. in those houses today? I don't think anyone else does. No. They, no. The only one that, that I know that was ever lived in year round is ours. Wow. And now, whether he was able to. Do it after the storm. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go down there and look. I yeah. I saw someone in there after the storm. They were looked like they were trying to salvage whatever. But it's a nice place to spend the summer. Yeah, though. I'm sure if it if yeah. they ever go, the town will never allow them to rebuild them. No, be, no. That'll be, that'll be. They don't have much property around no. them either. Pretty no, close. I mean, now there's nothing in the front. I mean, nothing. They, no. No beach. The one that ours is now like on still, you know, on stilt. Mm. So it's. There's that no, helps. if you walked out the front door, I think you'd fall in the bay. You'd be right in the yeah. bay. Wow. Well, so that's interesting. And what type of music do you remember listening to? Oh, probably yeah. big bands mostly. Yeah. Uh, you know, then we get into Lindy Hop, of course, then in the war yeah. years. You know, they had all the Glenn Miller and all yeah. of that type of thing. That's mostly what I remember. Gosh. We only had radio, obviously. Yeah, we radio. Didn't have TVs. No television. No television, no games, no, no whatever. No, no. Were you ever a member of a band? Did you ever play an instrument? In school, I you played. Did. Yeah, played a trumpet or cornet. Sure. Yeah, same thing. Cornet. And uh, let's see, what foods were cooked for celebrations or special events? Well, most of the, yeah. the only really special events I could really think of is really clam bakes, clam old fashioned bakes. clam bakes, where they did the the ring and put the seaweed and the yeah. clams yeah. in it. I occasionally, I. The only person I know that would still do that is Jack Stevens in Bayport. Yeah. Because he remembered that as a kid, too. And uh, yeah. it's kind of like a lost art, I guess you want to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Other than that, I, you know, because, well, my father originally owned the fish market on a corner of Bayport <clears throat> Avenue where the Hodax is now. Oh, yes. Okay. So, believe me, I knew a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. And there's still a fish store. Still a fish store. Corner. There, yeah, close by. Yeah, I go there a lot. And can you describe or explain the contents of any of the pictures? I know we're going to have pictures on the website. Yeah, well, pictures are, you know, the one is my original house that I lived in as a, as a kid. Too and bad it, that house is gone. Oh, it, was yeah, it was a beautiful house. house. And there was a, actually the one room, and I can still picture it, yeah. upstairs in the front, John Hodge, one of our local oh, characters yeah. that did the carvings. Sure. And painting, yeah. painted the whole room as a mural of like painting. a duck. Oh. Of the uh, meadows with the ducks flying over it. Beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Oh. And I, I can I can still see it. It was like the whole the yeah. whole room. It he was, was a very talented oh. painter and woodcarver. Yes. Oh yeah, very. John talented. Hodge. You knew him, of course. Yeah. Well, he used to come yeah. into my father's bar. Yeah, of course. And, you know, for a drink you'd yeah. get a carving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any. I, yeah. you know, somewhere during the year, the years they've all they disappeared. disappeared. And uh, let's see, about Bayport and Bluepoint, what's your earliest memory of Bayport? Well, I guess as yeah. a child living there, and you know. In that house. A big house and a big porch, riding Beautiful. my bike around there. 
it was it was a nice place to grow up though wasn't it yes it was and I had friends well my best two of my best friends was Althea Trockelman and Janet Igna and Igna's owned the chicken farm on Montauk Highway right by the lake right by well the garden place is there now yeah and Opposite the, McConnell right, Avenue. And the house was where the, I guess it's yeah. a spa now or something. Was that ever the Old Oak Inn? Did they ever call it the Old Oak Inn? I, I don't, don't know. Maybe. That house, you mean? Yeah, the house. I don't remember any, anything being in there. A lot of places changed names over the oh, years. Oh, yeah, they so changed a lot. It's hard to keep up with well, them we all. We used to, you know, that's where we, <laughs> I used to, we'd go there and, yeah. you know, basically we played school, we were yeah. able to go up to Camp Edie. You oh, know, we yeah. always went up, we swam in that lake. Yeah. And uh, played up that way. Because now I don't think you can do that, but... No, Girl Scout Camp. Girl Scout Camp now. That I guess it was... It probably was then, too. Yeah. But it was more accessible. You know, they let anybody in there. Yeah. And then yeah. in wintertime, and everybody says only old people say the winters were winters, but they were. Yeah. We were able to skate most of the winter. Sure. Either on that pond or... Beeman's, we called it, down off Seaman. Yeah, Beeman's. Or Hildress and Blue Point. Hildress Pond. And then there was ice boating. I mean, I remember my oh, father, yeah. my grandfather having the ice boats. Yeah. That was a big sport. The scooters. The races, yeah. <clears throat> and I haven't seen that. I mean, last I can remember that is probably maybe in the 50s when we when I moved to Garrison. There a lot of the uh, oh, Dave Fishman that lived down there in the street, he had one. We used to go, still had the ice boats then. I don't remember too many years after that, though. Those ice boats went fast. Yeah. They, I don't know what happened. The winters changed, I yeah, guess. Yeah, global warming. Wasn't enough ice. I, I mean, we could know. walk across the bay, or they drove yeah. cars across the bay. Yeah. Things like that. It's a little risky, but yeah, they did right, do it. they did it. <laughs> uh, that's well, very, thing. yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. And, of course, you went to school in Bayport. Yes. And you went to the well, it was school. Once, well, it was all the old part of the high school now. Yeah, it's the old part. There was no kindergarten. I only started in first grade. Yeah, so I don't know what year kindergarten six. began. I don't know when that started. Yeah, and then you went to first grade. Right, first grade. They really didn't six. have preschool back then. No. no. There was no nursery school. No. So you just went right into first yeah, grade. Went, yeah. Do you yeah, remember any good. of your teachers over there? Or? Some of them. I remember Ms. Weger. Oh. From, I think she was seventh grade, oh. and well, we were just, in fact, we were just talking about that at the uh, at the school election the other day about oh. practice and penmanship. Yeah, she taught the Palmer method. Well, she was. You know, that's a lost art today. That. Yes, she didn't do well because my handwriting has never been good. Never so been good. she didn't <laughs> succeed with me. Do you remember making all those? Oh yeah, the circles. circles. Yep, you had to do all the circles. Penmanship. And, yep. And I remember in the, the old inkwell, classrooms, they just said even the inkwell, uh, around the anything. ceiling, they always had the alphabet, yeah. capital letter, small letter. Yeah. Yeah. And you had, you had inkwells and inkwells. Ink pen, pens. You didn't have what no, they have now. There were no ballpoints. No. And nowadays, I don't even know if they... Penmanship. I think, it, I think it's all I understand keyboard. now they're not even going to teach script. I don't think that's stop. good, though. I don't either. I don't when think that's good. You still have to sign your name somehow. Yeah, what are you going to do when you have to when sign have a driver's sign, license? Right. Or to make it, you have to have a, a check. Anything. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know. That. I don't understand that. But I know in the old days, that's penmanship was important. Oh, yes. It was yeah. a big thing. <laughs> yeah, I still remember. I mean, uh, she, of course, she stands on I think everybody's mine because she's yeah. still you know, Miss Ormsby and Jean Potter and yeah. a lot of a lot of good teachers. Who was principal back then? Do you remember? I only remember Garton Garton Lewis sticks in oh, my yeah, mind, Garton but I don't Lewis. know if he was I know uh, I was in high school or not, but yeah. he was there for a long you know. That's of course interesting. Coach Vignato. I mean he's like Oh yes. A Joe Vignato. You had him right from elementary school to yeah. high school. He did everything. Yeah. He taught not only he was coach, but he taught all of the gym classes. Boys and girls. Yeah. He taught here in Bayport, at Blue Point, you know, yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. And then went over to the over uh, there. high school. Yeah, he was like the only one. I mean, they, the only one. He did it all. He what was the whole phys ed yeah. department. Yep. Coached all yeah, the sports. I don't think we had, we didn't have an athletic director. Did you play like sports? Not really, Not no. Not really, no. too many girl things yeah, in girls, those days. Yeah, girls, there weren't many it's for girls. recently, maybe 60s yeah. or there on, that Good. they started to pick up. Yeah. Now and there was... Coach you know, Fignato, I believe, lived over there. On, uh, lived on McConnell, McConnell right. Yeah. Was family. Yeah. Yeah, he was... Very I mean, interesting. nobody's ever going to surpass what he did. No, no. He had that famous basketball team in 47, 48. Yeah, that was a championship, yeah. I think. And that was, in those days, was hard because yeah. they, 
that was they couldn't get it. They didn't have the transportation like they have no. now. And during the war, they used to have to take trains. The railroad get, league. Yeah, so they had to play teams that they could make by train. That's right. Like Iceland, or couldn't play somewhere. Port Jeff. No, so they couldn't get there. Couldn't get there. No. Rationing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what did you do for fun in, when you were growing up in Bayport? Well, Really, we just, yeah. you know, we just played. I mean, I guess like any little girl, yeah. I played dolls and, you know, yeah. we played house, we played school. We, yeah. You know, we just didn't, I don't know, board games, yeah, things like that. Yeah. Played outside, you know, you do make up your own yeah. games. <laughs> <laughs> it could be we were creative, which most of them are not now. No. They no. don't have something organized for them. They don't know, know what to do. I know. <laughs> they look at you like I'm bored. What can I? Yeah. What is there to do? They got, well, they don't know how they to have play. Have a million things. No, they don't play. No, no playhouse. And it isn't the same in the neighborhoods anymore. It isn't. Neighborhoods yeah, no. we could run all over. Even when my kids grew up. Yeah. You know that neighborhood on Garrettson Avenue where I live now was all woods. There was no. Yeah. The only houses were there was two houses, a few on Paulana, that were their friends, and they could just run over there and play. They made a little path in the woods in the middle of the street and just ran over there. But no one didn't have fences. You just no, went from one no yard fences. to the other. And there weren't that many cars. No, there weren't cars. You didn't have to worry about them. Didn't have to hit. worry about cars. And now, with your bikes, they could ride all over. But <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. now you have to think about everything. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Very busy street yeah. now, I'll tell you. Yeah, and let's see. What were some of the gathering places in Bayport? Well, they never really like, had... Upstreet, maybe? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Firehouse probably, but Firehouse was in the village then. Yeah, it was down the village, yeah. And that was always, you know, they'd always have things there. And the church was yeah, right the up church. the street. There wasn't really ever like a community center type thing. I yeah. mean, when we were a little older, we went the the, the Sugar Bowl restaurant up on the oh, corner. Oh, yeah, Sugar Bowl. You know, the people would go there. Yeah. And, you know, and then we'd That's nice. ride our bikes, we'd go to Blue Point, play the. On the handball wall over here behind the school. Yeah. Or go, you know, by the ponds. I, there wasn't really, well, firehouse has been mostly <laughs> my life surrounded it anyway. My father was a member, and then my husband was, and then he, yeah. and then I've been there since <laughs> forever. Been yeah. at Lake Auxiliary for 64 years. Wow. And, and been with the fire district as a secretary for over 40 Wow. And now I'm a commissioner there, so good for you. It really is, <laughs> and I'm the first woman commissioner. I was going to say a woman, without a doubt. No, there's been not, there are other ones on the island, but definitely, but, you're the but first, none up here. You're the first way. commissioner in Bayport, Bayport. and probably anywhere in this area. I don't. That's wonderful. That I know of. I don't think there are good any for others. you. There are some, especially out east where they yeah. don't have many people. Yeah, right, right. You know, they have there's some, and there's a couple over, in, I think Cold Spring Harbor, somewhere over there. But not not here. No, it's, it's unusual. And does that take a lot of your time oh, being yes, commissioner? It does. I was going to yes, say, I think that's demanding. And I'm still a secretary. I kept both jobs. Yeah, that's a lot. Yes, it is. So it takes up a lot of time. Yeah, it does. So it's it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting because you know I am the first, and I'm not because obviously not a fireman. Yeah. But I you know I did it because I I said after 40 years of being secretary, I always said I want to be on the other side of the table. Yeah. Sometime before I die, so good for you. It was an opening, and they all said, "Go for it." Go do for it. it. So, how did you get that? Were you elected? Yeah, I had to be elected. You I were elected for office, yeah. by the general, by the general public. Public, yeah. Good for you. I didn't have any opposition, so I didn't have to do. And any, I'm sure the salary campaign. The <laughs> salary is wonderful. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, we get a lot out of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lucky sure. to get a little food now and then. Or a I know. Coffee. That's what I was going to say. I don't think anyone. <laughs> I get said coffee it. every morning. That's, yeah, that's yeah. It. They're not in it for the money. No. You remember the railroad station over there? Oh yes. That was a that beautiful was a station. Beautiful station. It was a Bayport. shame when it went. It was a shame. I I really no. don't. I did the. I, I honestly don't know why they closed that. I guess because it just became. I don't know. Not used enough? I don't know. Maybe they didn't have enough commuters. I guess, but I, I mean, know. I can't imagine because so many people did work in the city. I know. I remember them bringing the mail in there, or the guy yeah. coming with it. They'd have that little mail bag, and he'd come down there and grab it off the... And hook it. Off the tray, hook it off. Hook it. Oh, Ooh. Vernon Royden, I still look <laughs> for him. I wish Stanley was around because yeah, Stanley could tell us... Oh, Stanley, yes. A lot of stories about the mail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'd know <laughs> yeah. more about the mail. He'd know a lot about it, that's but, for sure. Yeah, no, they've been and the post office was down post in the... post office was in the village. In the village. And then they moved it yeah. down where... Yeah. Now, after that, it was right in the middle of the village where... Yes. I guess Spotlight is, maybe. Yeah, Spotlight. Right there. Right and then there. they moved down further. 
Well, that was Ma Moon's then. That was that. <laughs> Ma Moon, yeah. And then. Across Street and Country Junk. Right. Yeah. And it went down, yeah. Now it's, I don't know what it is. It's a veterinarian. The veterinarian. Right. That yeah. was a poster. But, you know, when I first. I moved to Garrison Avenue in 49. Sure. And we didn't have mail delivery. No. So, no. you know, every day you'd put the kids in a carriage and walk down the village. And go pick up. Shans was there then, so yeah. you'd go to Shans. Or, we miss that, don't oh, we? Oh, yes, we do. That was, That's terrible. There weren't many stores. We didn't have shopping centers no. and things. So, you know, some of the shopping, I remember mostly going to Sable. Yeah, of course. They had the, I think it was the Ralston's or, and the Bohax, I guess, open. Yeah, Ralston and... Bohax opened on the Thomas corner. Ralston. Of, what uh, about a Royal Royal's Scarlet? Do you have a Royal Scarlet in Bayport? I don't think so. There was a meat market. Oh yeah, there was meat market. Yeah, yeah, right on the, way corner. Over the corner with the doctor's office. In. Yeah, and uh, Mantha's Garage. I Mantis, know was there. Yeah. Wow, but we do miss Shans. That's for sure. Oh yeah, never Terrible. had another place like that. Can you think of any great stories or legends about Bayport? <laughs> well, the only legend was, like you said, some of the characters, like John Hodge. Yeah. That did was, you know, he was certainly unique to say the least. And he was talented. He was so talented, but so he was just talented. a, I don't know what you want to say, I know. like a derelict kind of person. Yeah. But, and as I said before, you'd come into my father's bar and you give him a couple of drinks and you'd get a carving. You get a wood carving. Yeah. Get Maybe a, a salad bowl. A salad bowl we had. There. We had one, and my cousin took it to Texas. In fact, sure. I'm going to ask her if she still has it. He did yeah. an Indian in a canoe. And, yeah. you know, it stood out like 3D. Some of them he actually signed. Yeah. Not all, Not but all. some of them. And they, we had the bowls. We had John all Hodge. sorts of ducks and, and yeah, ducks. like a little round plaque he'd put the ducks on. Yeah. Or just even just the ducks themselves. Yeah. They were amazing. We have some of his work at Meadowcroft. There is some of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure some of it survived. There used to be a lot of it at Hunts and Katie's. Yes. Oh, yeah. The whole place was A lot was, of it. Was that. Or Gene Ammons, you yep, know, Gene in the Ammons. old days. Well, that was the other thing. My father, yeah. my father owning the bar, had to had to visit all his uh, <laughs> buddies on there. So on his day off on a Tuesday, we'd either be at Gene Ammons yeah. or Harry Ashenbrands on the corner of Oak, Oak Avenue or Manhattan House yeah, the Manhattan in the village. House. Yeah, that's and right. And then there was the one, but we didn't go there much. On the corner of Bayport Avenue, there was always some type of restaurant or yeah. I always thought it was that more like a diner or something. Was well, the one side, yeah. on the south side, there was yeah. like a little lunch. Well, not even a luncheonette. Yeah. It was more like a, not flows, but something where you could eat. Right, right. Go up to it. But there was, on the north corner, where La Suarez. Where La Suarez. Yeah, there's, there was always oh. something in there. Oh, that's interesting. But because he had fish market, we used to go to Islip to Whitecap to get the oh, fish. yeah. And then he would stop at the one there, next yeah. door to that. Yeah. Sometimes in Sable. We had a lot of those. Yeah. Do you remember any anecdotes or funny stories or anything that pertained to Bayport or something unique about Bayport? Little stories? Well, I don't know. We just had, you know, kids, the high school guy, kids used to, did, you know, Halloween, they oh, yeah. did the, well, they <laughs> put some jacked up things on flagpoles and roofs and things like that. I mean, I guess Lord knows you couldn't do anything like that today. No. No, not at all. No, it was, it was, I mean, it certainly was a great place to grow up. I mean, yes. And if, even for my kids. And my son moved out east when, after he graduated from high school because he wanted, he, Bayport was already starting to become very busy and yeah. starting, you know, to build up and be more crowded. And he thought if he moved in, moved to Springs, and he, because that was very small at the time, and he thought he could bring them, you know, they would be brought up like he was brought up. But in a way they were, but it still wasn't the same. Not the same as no. Bayport. If he no. had stayed here, definitely wouldn't be. Yeah. It's very different now. Do you remember anything about the library, the early library here? Not much, no. No. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I came here. Yeah. I would have had to bring the kids here because we didn't have computers and things. They'd have That's to come right. here for... To do book reports, book reports and projects and research, research things. That I, you know, I know definitely we did that. The library always had a lot of encyclopedias. And yeah, I don't think I even know what a, kids would know what an encyclopedia is anymore. No, because they go on their computer. Well, they have to do. They have them, but it's on a computer. Google. <laughs> all, all they have to do is just go punch it in. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, true. in a way, is amazing. But amazing. It, it is amazing. I mean, yeah. the, the information that 
is there and available, so is yeah. is mind boggling. Now we're in an electronic age. But it takes a I, I know some things take away from me. They don't write. People don't write anymore. They just email. It's not like letters. The same personal type yeah. thing. Yeah. You don't have the letters. Yeah. And like I said before, I'm not even sure that they're going to teach script forever. I no. mean, I, I don't know. That that's unbelievable, <laughs> Billy. Were, were you active in any of the local churches at all? Not much in the church because yeah. when I was little, I spent most of my weekends with my family in Patchogue. So yeah. I went to Manual Lutheran with them. Oh, that's nice. And yeah. uh, I did go to the Sunday school in Bayport. Yeah. I guess when I was really young, because it was right next door. Yeah, Bayport only has the one church. <laughs> only had the one, so I did go. Yeah, over Bayport there. United Methodist yeah. Church. You know, and then of course I was, you know, like most kids, course. Girl Scouts, course. things like that. Yeah. And then as I got older, yes, I've been involved in a lot of organization, local organization. Did you ever go camping like a Camp Edie and live in a tent up there? Yes, or, uh, with Girl Scouts. Yeah, Girl Scouts yep. do that. They still do it. They still do. They still yep. dive canoeing yep. and swimming and yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that was a big thing. I archery. Mean, yeah, because you didn't go. You know, we didn't go away camps no, and things like that. No, we Camp Edie is well known. Yes, it's, it's known amazing. all over. But no, I, I venture to guess that. I, <clears throat> well, I would say half the people, but I, I venture to guess a lot of people in town don't even know that exists up there. Oh. I, you know, if you don't ever go up there, I know it's like another. Actually, I went up there not too long. Well, not I wouldn't say not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, and I said it's like another world. You it go up is. there, and it's it's <clears throat> totally <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. You don't know you're in Bayport. No, you don't. They they have and quite I, a few acres up there. Yeah, I don't know how many. But I mean, they're very. They don't really let you in. Much <clears> no, them, no. Unless they have something going on. Now, is that what that light show is at Christmas? Yeah. When, oh, what, what do you think has been the biggest change you've seen in Bayport in the last 80 years? Uh, obviously, so many more people and houses and everything is just... And it's, I feel it's lost its, some of its charm because everything kind of centered around the village. Yeah. Where we had, the firehouse was there, the post office was there, they had the little store, we, everybody would go to Shands, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Villages now, most of the stores are empty. Yeah. And they're really... And then I... They'll probably never really be able to do anything because there's really no way to park now. And, you know, any place to survive, you just don't have the traffic going through for the deli, for, you know, people to run in and out. It's just yeah. not accessible. Um, but you still know a lot of people in town. I still know a lot. I, I know. worked at the <laughs> school election the other day, and, yes. I, and I said to Flo and Alden, well, how many people that came in did you know? Yeah. <laughs> and they said, a lot. A lot. And I said, yeah, I do. I said, I do too. But yeah. but the reason that I do is because of all my generations. Yes, that's Some of right. them are my, my son's friends or families or sure. whatever, my grandchildren's, and now my great grandchildren. Now I know some new people through them. So if it wasn't for that, oh. <laughs> there's not many of my generation that yeah. I see there anymore. But I'm sure when you go up there to vote, it takes you like an hour to vote <laughs> because you're, well, I'm there all, you're yeah. meeting a lot of I'm people. I'm there all day, so I get yeah, to see right. most well, everybody that comes in. You get to see a lot of people. Yeah, it's, I still know yeah. a lot of people. And it was funny because when I, when I ran True. for the fire district election, there was one man that said he was interested in running. And, he, and I said to him, you know, why? And he said, well, you know, I want to see some changes, and I think yeah. this and that and the other thing. And I said, fine. So I said, do you want to run against me? And he's like, well, he said, I don't know. He said, I don't really know a lot of people in Bayport. And I just looked at him and went, yeah. guess what? I do. <laughs> you know a lot of people, so I said, and they know you. Right. So, so I said, if you want to run against me, I, go right I ahead. I don't have a problem. He chose not to run against you, no, I presume. He quickly changed his mind. Changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. It was why. kind of funny. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I don't really have a problem. Uh-uh. I said, I got a few people lined up that yeah. I know would be, make phone calls for me. And sure. I said, I'm kind of sitting here now just thinking street by street. Who I know, oh, and I think I, I know somebody on every block just about. Yeah, you wouldn't need bumper stickers. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was kind don't, of funny. I don't think so. No. And what do you miss most about the way it used to be in Bayport? Oh, I think it's just too yeah. hectic. It's too, people hectic. are too stressed now. Yeah. They live very different lives. I mean, it was life was much simpler, and, yeah. you know, we enjoyed I mean, we didn't, like most people, yeah. we didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, we have just... Normal jobs. I didn't work yeah. when kids grew up. Um, you know, our simple things were we had a boat. We'd go out on a Sunday and we'd take a couple of friends and picnic. And the kids yeah. would jump off the boat and swim and clam. And <laughs> we'd come back home and cook out in the backyard. You know, and a you know big night out was going to a friend's house to play cards. And 
you know, things were so much easier. The kids, and the kids had things that they did, the sports and things, but not organized yeah. and crazy like now, where they're running yeah. in all directions. They're in leagues today. Everything, and, and you, yeah. they, they made, they want these kids to be professionals at six years old. I, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they crazy. just, they stress them. Everybody is stressed because yeah. they're trying to do everything that they can't afford. Yeah, and, and it, I mean, I see it with. All these people, and I go to the kids' games, and I hear them, parents talking. And I'm like, mm. I just shake my head, like, how do they do this? I mean, I it's crazy. How do they do it? And it's, you know, mm. both parents, for most part, both, both parents work, and they're yes. juggling that, and it's, uh, and they, they have to. Well, of course, the, it's that they want to live here, and sure. you know, everybody does. I mean, we don't want to move from here. Yeah. But it's, it's very difficult. Life is very difficult. I mean, if we didn't have all the. I know sometimes I don't know if the conveniences are that much easier either now that you have all the gadgets and whatnot. I mean, we didn't have all of the, you know, we didn't have to have everything electric to open a can or no. whatever. No. I mean, yeah, washing machines and dryers and things, yes, they're an improvement, but, yeah. you know, some things, I don't know if they all are. I, it's, it is, it's very different. And as I said, it isn't even just when I was a kid. My, my, my son grew up here. He sees the difference. Probably sure. even my grandchildren to some degree, sure. but it's no. I this like I said, some things about it that are are definitely better. Yeah. But yeah, and although it's still a great place to live, I'm Anybody amazed by a, the traffic in oh, Bayport right. on Montauk Highway. Forget about Montauk Highway on a Friday uh, afternoon. On a Friday afternoon, they're backed up. In fact, for even yesterday, three, three yesterday traffic morning, lights. I I think it was yesterday. Yeah. I came down. My, I was going west, but cars going east were again backed up from. Sometimes they're all the way from Bayport Avenue to It Gillette. looks like the Hamptons. Yeah. It's un- unbelievable. It I mean, is. And even Middle Road. I mean, we have the stop signs now. Yes. But even that, to get out of my street, sometimes I have to sit there and wait for five or six cars. Sure, because there's no stop sign there from no, Middle Road. No, not for no, us. No. But I can't believe how <clears> quick <throat> they get from Seneca Avenue yeah. to, well, Esplanade. To the school. Esplanade. Right. And I'm yep. saying, if they made a full stop, I don't know how they could get here that quick. But they do. And it seems yeah. to be one right after the other. And yeah. I'm like, how can they? I, I just, it's it's better. But then again, I, you know, it's still, I've seen time many times when they don't stop. So the road's get, very pretty road, though, yes, isn't it, when you drive is. along? Yeah. I prefer it. I still do it, way. but now sometimes <clears> with the <throat> stop signs, I... I go out of my way, and I, when I leave Sable, I'll still take Montauk Highway. Take Montauk Highway and, and come down, down. Seneca. I, yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's just yep. drives me crazy yep. with those signs. That park is nice there, too, at uh, the Esplanade. Memorial Park? Memorial Park. Oh, Memorial nice Park. Place. We're working on yeah. it now. We, 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 I we're, bet. We're trying to get... Sure. We, just of that, say the thing, I belong to that. We've had that park association since it opened, which yeah. they built, or they made it, which I don't remember what year it was, but... Many years ago, when my son was little, and he was, I guess, a Boy Scout, probably 10, 11 years old, whatever he was, they used to, the the Legion people used to hire them to put the flag up every day. They didn't have that big flag ball there then. But, and he still remembers that. I asked him that the other day, do you remember putting the flag up? He said, yeah, Jackie Stevens did it too, I think. And they paid them. They did. Yeah, yes. they would pay him a couple of dollars yep. a month or whatever. Yep. And he even remembered, he even remembered where the guy lived. Um, oh. It was funny. Well, the Miss Stanley this year. Miss Stanley, and we're gonna yeah. when we dedicate, and we're gonna we just bought two new benches. Good. Which we were hoping to have installed for Memorial Day, but they're only coming in today, so it's not gonna happen. No, no. Uh, but one will be for Stanley, who. That's very nice. He did. I mean, no one will ever do in that park what he did. No, he spent no. countless hours. Yeah. You know, tending to it, flowering, watering, because the water yeah. is all the way over by. The corner, and yeah. he'd drag a hose over there and a sprinkler, and <clears throat> he'd work on it. And then Charlie Bogle is the other one. Charlie Bogle sure. was owned the original property and donated that property for yeah. the park. Well, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you wanted to add? I don't think so. I mean, I've just we covered you know, a lot. I've been in every, you know, just about every organization <laughs> I think that there is. Yeah, I was a lot of them with the sports. I've been, yeah. you know, an officer in Little League and school uh, and Booster Club and for a number of years. And sure. Fire department. Fire department has been, you know, of course yeah. that's changed a lot through the years too. Sure. And then the year after I went in as commissioner, this past year my grandson is elected chief. So oh, that's nice. we really have, certainly have, that is unique without a doubt. I don't think yeah. there's any other place on the island that can say they have a grandmother and a grandson. 
isn't it? In there at the same time. Yes. I mean, that's... And the timing was kind of right when the, when the time came up, and I said, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'll do, do it, it now. Do it. It makes it a little difficult sometimes because we're kind of the bosses. Yes, I know. So you are. sometimes yeah. I, know. I have to separate. Yes, mentally. I have to separate, you know. Yes. The, the, I separate the job and the, that they were, yep. we're uh, related. But it, it works out. It, it works. It works. And it's, you know, without a doubt, it's. It's different. And it was like the uniforms Bayport wears. Yeah, they They're stayed, just like 1890 or... Right. It's from the original. The original. And there's uh, some uh, opposition. It, well, uh, the problem with it now is it's become more difficult uh, to get them. I bet. They can get the material, and then they have to find somebody to make them. Yeah. And that's not, become a problem. That's and not easy. even more so, the problem is getting those leather belts made. Uh, they get the uniforms. They usually yeah. find somebody that... That yeah, was you need a belt. Use, but those leather belts are, are like handmade, and that's become that's become that's a, problem. a problem. So yeah. there's been talk about <clears throat> changing them, going to the you know. But we got a lot of traditionalists there that yeah. they're gonna. <laughs> I kind of like the old ones. Yeah, but they like do. you said, but they're they not actually easy. thought about and maybe <clears throat> maybe they would do it at some time. Is maybe going to the regular uniform <clears throat> and they're just keeping those for special things. Special occasions. Special occasion, but yeah. I don't know. That's I mean, good. so far they're. They found somebody again now for the shirt, so yeah. if they can keep that going. I hope so. There's probably other places. Uh-huh. I believe it's East Brentwood that has a uh-huh. band, oh, and they good. have a uniform similar to that. Good. So, you know, but that's the only other ones mm-hmm. like that that we ever see. Yeah, you no, can't exactly are. buy those uniforms. No, no, no. you can't. You no. have to have them made. There's no, no they have to be made. Special. Handmade. Than yeah. That. Well, they were probably handmade 110 years ago, oh, yeah. 120. So they were. So they're handmade again. Yeah. And then the material got yeah. difficult to get. You know, I they know. Use that red wool. The wool. They need the wool. Yeah. And then every every time they'd get it, it would be a different dialect, so it would kind of be a different color. Sometimes they're almost. It's purpley. not easy to hold <laughs> it together. No, no it isn't. No. No. But they're lucky that we still get the volunteers. That Do you have an get. old piece of rolling equipment over there that you're proud of? At the yeah, we have the old the old antique. The uh, cart? Yeah, that we use. Hose, no. hose cart? Afford, yeah, we have the hose cart, yeah. and then we have one old truck that they oh, use for, for parades. Anything, parades and, yeah, unfortunately, funerals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they do put the, yeah, you know, they, they will do. transport coffins sure, on there. Sure, sure. Well, that was yeah. great, Connie. Okay. I think it went real well. I think we covered Thank you very much for coming in. Did. Yeah, we did a lot. <laughs> We did a lot. It was wonderful. This marks the end of the interview with Connie Hab.